Alright, so this week's weekly UI is to do a file upload. So I'm going to do a file upload modal that you would use on desktop. And here we go. Um, first step, I'm going to add in a slight background here to the artboard just so that we can see the modal that we're designing on top of it. Um, and inside of that modal, first things first for this upload, I want to do like a drag and drop area. That way it's pretty clear where you need to drag the area or drag the files into for upload. Um, make that the first thing the user notices. So we'll put some like a call to action inside of here. We'll keep a little placeholder for some for an icon. And there's always the op the chance that a user is not going to be able to drag and drop or doesn't feel like it because they don't have the um, file already located. So we'll add in a second call to action in here where you can just browse the files on your machine. And we'll make that a little button so it stands out and is obvious that you can click on it. So we've got that in there. And then the next thing to add is a, um, a title for this modal to, so users know what they're doing. But I'm going to bump this drag and drop over because it feels weird to have the drag and drop on the left with the copy on the right because you want to read what it is before you actually do the thing. So just like order of events, we'll put the copy over here on the left. So we've got the upload files title, and then we'll put some copy in here, supported file types. We'll just throw some in here. Uh, make that a little smaller. And then we'll add in a max file size too. I always get grumpy when I try to upload something and then it tells me what the max file size is rather than telling me that up front. Um, and it actually probably makes most sense to put that with the actual upload. So I want to move that over inside of our drag and drop area. And I'm going to add, I'm going to actually bump this up a little bit and make it smaller and put it underneath the title here. And then we'll put a list of the files that you've already selected to upload. I was going to say already uploaded, but we'll show progress as well. So files that you've selected to upload will be here on the right. And then that way, like I was saying earlier, order of events, you've got the title up top and then the area to select files on the left and then the files selected on the right. Um, so I've got a box here for the a placeholder for the icon, I've got the file name, and then I've got an X in order to cancel the upload. I'm going to add in a progress bar to actually show progress against that upload. And we'll add a second line here just to indicate that this is a progress bar. And center that up with the icon a little bit better. Then we'll duplicate that to show that this is a list where you can upload multiple files at once. And we'll show different file or progress. We'll actually show that that one's completely uploaded. And if it's already uploaded, you actually don't need the X because you can't cancel an already uploaded file. So we'll turn this into a checked so that it's like this is successfully uploaded. Indicate that to the user visually. And what do we want to do next? Let's see here. After that, we want to look at um, the, let's actually show three different states here. Okay, so we've got a successful upload first. We've got an in-progress upload last, and then we'll show a failed upload, or sorry, successful in-progress, and then we'll show a failed upload upload last, and that way we can show the different states. Um, okay, so let's select a typeface. I want to do something that's pretty clean, so I'm going to go with, uh, let's do Open Sans. It's very simple, doesn't introduce much personality, but definitely very legible. One of my go-tos. So we'll do a bolder weight for the title and then this drag and drop area. I want it to be a little lighter so it's not quite so overpowering on the page. And so I'm going to turn that into a stroke, a dashed stroke or a dotted stroke here. We'll play with the size a little bit. 
and let's do let's play with the alignment a little bit more here I'm gonna grab an icon here to replace that black square and we'll center that up a little bit better and we'll make that a little bit smaller so that it feels more like detail text and then we'll uh, increase the weight of the actual data points here so that that's first thing the user sees when they're reading those details and it really stands out and they're not having to really search for what that information is and then let's see here what colors do we want to introduce here for our palette I think No, let's not do that orange or purple. Green feels a little too vibrant. Let's kind of play with this blue color. So I like this as a starting point, but I'm going to adjust it slightly and make it a little less green and a little brighter here. I kind of like this uh, teal or cyan kind of color. So we'll make that a swatch so we don't lose it. And then we will turn this button here into an outline button so it feels more secondary and we'll increase the font weight of the type here so it's legible. Let's get that vertically centered. It's being stubborn. Okay, there we go. Okay, so we'll select that and we'll group it and then let's center all of this up and kind of tighten the letting there and we'll pull back the details here and make them a little lighter so they feel they aren't quite as prominent when you look at the screen here feel more like de like a note or detail not the primary information okay so let's pull some colors into our progress here so I want to make a little square up here to use as a swatch and I actually want to introduce some other colors and I'm going to pull in this tool that I like to use called coolers.co and let's grab the hex value here so what I want to do is find a success color and a failure color to introduce to the palette and we'll use this blue as kind of like the um, info color so you can paste the hex in here and actually lock it and then you just hit the space bar until you find a palette that you like and it will just generate palettes for you so I kind of like that pink a little bit actually I'm going to go with this red that definitely speaks more to the failure aspect than the pink does so we got our blue and red and I tend to go with like a green color for success that seems to be a pretty standard pattern my green's too muted though, so let's play with some others. Uh, still feels a little muted. What if we introduced a color besides the green? Purple, that didn't feel right. Oh, I like this blue. Okay, so that stands out a lot from the other palettes, but isn't, isn't that green, but it definitely stands out like that something is happening here which is what we want for the success um, so we'll have this the cyan the kind of pinkish red for our failure and then the bluish purple for our success so we'll do purple first because that's a successful upload and then we'll do the cyan or light blue for the in progress and then we'll do the red for our failure or failed upload down below okay so we've got our colors And let's see here. So I'm going to go find an icon to replace that black box we've got here. And I like to use um, material icons. It's my go-to for if I want to just grab a kind of generic uh, icon. If you're not looking to make custom icons and just want one for like information, perf informational purposes, um, material is a pretty safe bet. They've got a ton in there. Um, but I think I actually, looking at this, I don't think I want to do the file icon for all of them because 
and that'll just get kind of repetitive. So I'm actually going to move that checkbox over here to the left, or that check mark, and use that as an icon. And then that way, kind of your status is over here on the left. So we've got our success icon, and then let's bump that over and center that up. And then let's find a, an icon for the failed upload. Go over to material icons again. And we've got this kind of alert icon here with the, it's like a warning with the explanation point. So we'll put that in here and we'll get it to be a little bit larger so it feels like it's the same uh, visual weight as the other icons and we'll center those up. Okay, so next on the list, I'm actually going to, now that I think about it, we've got these statuses on the left here, and so it doesn't really make sense that this icon, the file icon is here, because it's not telling us anything. So I'm actually going to make this more of a progress loading icon, so that it's clear that this is, this is currently happening. So we will do a little track with a progress bar here. And if we were actually building this out, we could make it so that that was like a loading icon and rotating to um, get some movement in here and make it really clear that this is an in-progress thing. Um, but since we're static, we'll just do the plain old progress bar. Um, then I'm going to adjust these cancel icons so that they're a little bit more subtle. And I'm going to move them to be in line with the progress bars. Um, and let's see here. If this is a failed upload, then that's not going to be a can thing that you can cancel. So we'll do a little icon here to retry. Whoa, it's a very large arrowhead. Okay, that's not going to work. Let's do a... Let's actually do a, our own little arrowhead. So we'll put a square in here, and we'll get rid of this point and rotate. Here we go. Okay, and then we'll make that the fill. We'll kind of line this up and bump that up. And then we'll round our corner so that it feels a little softer and in line with the stroke styles we have here. It feels a little funny. Okay, that's better. We'll go with kind of a chunky arrowhead to go with the uh, thicker strokes that we've got going. Okay, so we've got our actions there on the right. And let's see, let's adjust the spacing here. So if we, oh, actually, you know what? Let's do an error message here because it failed, but let's tell the user why. Very frustrating to have a something fail and then not know why or how to fix it. So we'll tell the user that our file size exceeds the limit. And then let's see here, we'll adjust our spacing a little bit and let's add in an icon to close the modal, our hypothetical modal we've got going. Um, let's figure out placement for that. So we'll bump these in a little bit more. No. Let's see, do we want to align that with the title? Or do we want to have it tucked up in the corner and let the title be kind of on its own line? I'm not sure yet. It feels like it's too close up in the corner with the padding we've got going on for everything else. So I'm going to try to align that with the title here. And then let's actually get our progress bars and the content inside the modal to left or right align with that close icon as well. Okay, so we'll tuck that up a little bit and then we'll adjust our modal size and we'll add a drop shadow to indicate that this is an overlay. Let's actually center that drop shadow up. Okay. So let's center that up on the background and get it on the artboard, and then I'm going to bump it up a little bit just because that drop shadow hanging off the bottom makes it feel a little bottom heavy. And then I'm going to adjust the background we've got here. 
um, make this look nice and visually interesting just because uh, I've been posting these on dribble. So kind of compose our dribble shot here. So let's do let's do a kind of drastic gradient from the our like cyan to our purplish bluish kind of color. And to add a little bit more interest, I'm actually going to add a little pattern in here. So we'll take our icon that we've got and we'll fade it back, make it a little bigger, and then I'm just going to repeat it. And just have this subtle texture here in the background. So let's just repeat those and then we will evenly distribute them. And then I'm going to duplicate that line and offset it. Actually. I'm going to add one more in here, and that'll make offsetting it a little easier. Okay, and then I'm just going to duplicate those two lines over and over again. Whoops, not the background. Those two lines over and over again. One more time, and then we will vertically distribute those so that they're evenly spaced all the way around. And then I'm going to pull them back even more so it's even more subtle. And there we have it. That is our weekly UI for today. And let's do it again next week.